good morning students uh today i'll sh i will be giving you a little bit of information regarding the romantic age because uh, we are going to begin with william wordsworth's and uh, coleridge's poems and they are uh, you can say the icons of the romantic period so i'll just give you a little bit of background of the uh, romantic period uh, in uh, english literature the period uh, that is identified as the romantic period is a period beginning with the french revolution and uh, ending with victoria's succession to the throne of england uh, or maybe even before that uh, and um, the french revolution with its cry of liberty fraternity and equality began in 1789 and it became a turning point for all idealists and humanist thinkers for it provided uh, a vision of the liberal liberation of man i mean french revolution happened because it was uh, there was a marked difference between the haves and the have nots and the royals were kind of uh, you know they were flaunting their uh, their um, uh, their riches and uh, they were um, um, seen as wasteful spenders and uh, the taxes were all being levied on the have nots you know it was the poor that were becoming poorer and the rich people were becoming richer and that was perhaps one of the reasons why the french revolution broke out broke out and it uh, was a befitting closure to the age of reason and it hoped to distribute the riches of the world in a manner which would bring about equality and uh, the revolution inspired um, poets thinkers artists and politicians just as the spanish wars a uh, civil war was to later inspire the writers and poets of the 30s of the present se uh, century uh, this revolution offered freedom it was centered on the individual it promised equality and it inspired the idea of common interest uh, and there was a growing consciousness about both the political and the social rights and uh i think almost all the romantic poets were influenced by the french revolution uh the need for freedom that is at the individual level uh social national and the struggle to attain it attracted the young poets and artists at the poetical and the ideological levels uh the six major poets identified with this period are william wordsworth samuel taylor coleridge uh, and robert southey as the three romantics i mean they are the uh, you can say uh, they 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 are the main romantics i mean uh, placed at the center of the age the romantic period and uh, George Gordon Byron, Percy Bysshe Shelley and John Keats they are known as the younger romantics because they came after both Coleridge and uh, Wordsworth. And the great prose writers of this age are Charles Lamb, William Hazlitt, uh De Quincey and Walter Scott. romanticism is identified with certain characteristics and the most important of these is the concept of creativity uh because um, it, whatever work was done uh, during this period it it's, it's uh, there's a marked shift from uh, the kind of work that was produced in during the age of reason and um, the age of reason uh, i mean it was also known as the neoclassical age and Uh, this moves away from the neoclassical idea of imitation as the basis of the creative act and shifts towards the idea of imagination as a necessary factor in creativity uh the classical concept of art imitating from that uh, um, idea from that concept it 
during this period uh, there is a shift towards um, uh, imagination emphasis more on imagination as a necessary factor uh, leading to great creativity in some ways it is the first conscious rejection of the neo aristotelian hold of mimesis the and the other characteristics which are common to most of the writers of this moment are uh, basically closeness to nature and focus on the beauty and magnificence of nature then uh, there is also focus on uh, sensitivity that is uh, being more sensible and sensitive towards uh, personal relationships and giving predominant i mean predominance to emotions uh, m- moving out of the narrow restrictive uh love relationships and making filial relationships as a subject of poetry i mean it's not only uh the love relationships that they were talking about but they were there's there's uh, uh, emphasis on the filial relationships and the romantics also project a great love of freedom that was the basic concept you know uh, which uh, came to the forefront especially due to the french revolution because it talks about liberty freedom freedom of expression of self individual society um and uh, these poets they kind of highlight the role of feeling and uh, instead of seeing religion as a code of discipline they view it in its majesty in its mysticism and in its supernaturalism uh, there is a closer relationship between the individual and god it's it's kind of removing the institutions from between both man and god and it's like a direct co- uh, communication between man and god and it was the vehicle for that or the mediator was you can say nature uh it should be noted that the age of reason had focused excessively on the intellect and on social reality it had uh separated philosophy from fancy and fable from fact as uh, graham hof chose to describe it uh and the order of things was well planned and it had a uh, kind of orderliness to it and in this organized world of decorum and control there was very very little space for innovation or spontaneity it was like within set frameworks you had to uh i mean creativity was also kind of bound within a set framework and innovation or spontaneity or imagination was not given predominance or importance at all and uh, it was during the second half of the 18th century uh, that the undercurrents of romanticism of subjective and personal poetry developed steadily uh, besides thomson gray and collins there were other poets like uh, william cooper William Blake and Robert Burns uh, uh, who wrote uh, quite prolifically and who were like uh, you can say the major poets of that time William Blake I have already done uh, two poems of William Blake with you and it was William Blake uh, brought a questioning intellect to the simplest of things and Burns wrote love lyrics in the Scottish dialect uh but finally i mean this was like kind of there was a shift slowly there was a shift it's not as if you know one after the other um, uh, immediately the ages changed there's a kind of it it's a slow process it's a it's a transition and um, uh, you have these transitional poets uh, till finally you know they uh, i mean romanticism comes into full bloom uh, with the poetry of coleridge and uh, wordsworth and um uh it's 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 at its peak with the uh, especially with the uh, creation of the lyrical ballads it is noteworthy that almost all the romantic poets wrote about nature but their treatment was widely different and uh, you can actually see uh, you read you go through their poems you can see that the treatment uh, like for, for example even the kind of poems that wordsworth and coleridge wrote uh to moving on to poems written by uh, shelley and keats you can see a marked change of the way they treat nature uh, and out of these wordsworth approach was the most intense i mean he is like his focus and his 
ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ नेचर इज एक्सट्रीमली एक्सट्रीमली पावरफुल एंड हैविंग ही हैड एक्चुअली ग्रोन अप इन द लेक डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ इंग्लैंड एंड देफोर इज एसोसिएशन विज नेचर विद नेचर वॉज नॉट मेयरली एज एन ऑब्जर्वर और मेयरली एज एन एडमायर इट वॉज रादर मोर क्लोज रिलेशनशिप वेर ही सॉ द किनशिप बिटवीन नेचर एंड मैन इट वॉज नॉट जस्ट इट लाइक फॉर हिम नेचर एंड मैन लाइक यू कुड दे दे वर इंटरस्पर्स्ड दे वर टू टू क्लोजली नेट विद वन अदर एंड विद नेचर हैविंग द पावर टू सस्टेन ह्यूमन बींग्स थ्रू बोथ सॉरो एंड हैप्पीनेस वर्ड्स विद ऑल्सो फेल्ट इन इट अ काइंड ऑफ अ मिस्टिक प्रेजेंस विच डायल्यूटेड द डिविजन बिटवीन द रियल एंड द मिस्टिक uh there was i mean the 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 equation or you can say the relationship uh, there was no difference between man and nature it was like kind of that uh, boundary was blurred his poems uh, like tintern ab or to in, in uh, intimations the lucy poems the solitary reaper for example they reflect the approach to nature very clearly and he always perceived nature in relation to man on the other hand coleridge's attitude was different from that of wordsworth uh in some measure because uh, for coleridge too a relationship between an, uh, man and nature existed but he placed man at the center of this experience uh, uh and unlike wordsworth he did not believe in the all sustaining power of nature i mean for wordsworth you can say nature was all powerful it took precedence over uh, man uh, whereas for coleridge it was not so and according to coleridge a great deal depended on the human ability to relate to nature and in his opinion we receive from nature what we give uh from the environmental or the ecological view uh this is true because if we see like for example in the present times if we do not give to nature we will not receive from her as well it, and it's very clear if you plant a tree today then after 20 years you are going to get a you know spot of shade if you keep cutting trees then one fine day you are going to face with a desert and uh, the present environmental crisis is also because humans have been continuously taking from nature and has uh, um, and they have not been giving anything in return uh, therefore uh, you can say that a balance in a mutually beneficial relationship is missing and humanity stands at the greatest risk possible because of this and this was what coleridge kind of felt that it's a two way equation whereas for wordsworth it was only nature man stood at the center of nature and it was nature that was all powerful and nature that could you know um, uh, kind of give a mystical um, uh, experience to man it was like almost like god it was almost like uh, divinity uh, for coleridge the possibility of human perception being something more than response to birds nature is obvious um, now if we look at the younger romantics um uh, how they relate to nature in different ways um and uh, the different levels uh, there were there's there's a marked shift you can see a change because for shelley he perceived in it a parallelism uh that is uh, there there uh, he perceives a kind of a voice for the human experience uh, which is t- uh, tempestuous which is um, active there is a lot of motion there is uh, movement there is restlessness and there is change there is creativity and one example uh, which you have even in your syllabus which you will be doing soon that is the ode to west wind uh, that is a very very strong example of the same and it is a very fine exposition of shelley's treatment of nature man once again is at the center of this experience but nature requires an all encompassing role the optimism visible in the poem is derived from nature itself meanwhile uh, john keats he polarizes his experience between art and nature there's a marked shift and uh, in his poems you can see that uh, this is the subject of his odes over and over again if you see the ode to nightingale or if you see the note to the grecian urn they project this view very clearly ode to autumn is a poem which is addressed to autumn 
i mean there's a personification of autumn autumn and it also details the characteristics of other seasons uh, with uh, great subtlety the poet weaves the cycle of seasons and the central uh, uh vision is about the organic unity of nature so uh, thus we see that the role of nature and the manner in which it is treated differs from the precursors of romanticism to the younger romantics there is a marked shift from the beginning till it uh, uh, you know um, uh, comes to its zenith and then uh, later on you have the younger romantics uh, and after that it tapers off uh, it diffuses from one generation to another and from one poet to the next uh the early poets like gray for example they use nature as a backdrop and as a habitat where man lives it is used as a setting and the human lives lived ha- here are reflect uh, reflected uh, in the sturdiness and the patience of nature and uh, gray comes quite close to the wordsworthian concept of nature uh meanwhile uh, thompson and collins of the early 18th century describe nature in detail and the effort is to paint through words to make a landscape poem so to say uh it's like you know uh, just be- just beautifully describing uh nature just you know through the words through poetry they are trying to express what nature is all about but there is that, that mystical experience or that man within uh, placed within the center of nature that thing is missing and it's more like you can say uh, that a landscape has been created um, uh, or uh, a landscape poetry has been created through uh, uh, the kind of images or through the kind of uh, 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 examples that uh, thompson and Col- collins take take up in their poems uh, nature is also personified and uh, these personifications distance it from the human beings placing them on a separate footing okay whereas for wordsworth uh, the scenario was entirely different um, but then again we have cowper's poems uh, that bring about an identification with nature which finally leads to the romantics placing man at the center and going ahead with treating nature both descriptively and mystically so Uh, there is a marked shift i mean you can say simply put you can say that earlier poems of thompson and uh, collins they were descriptive and uh, with the poetry of uh, coleridge and wordsworth especially uh, the mystical element has been introduced and it's uh, it goes way way beyond what the earlier romantics talked about or what the earlier romantics experienced and described in their poems and then finally on to the younger uh, poets that skeets shelley and byron uh, where the relationship further changes so uh, this is just a brief uh, uh, introduction to the romantic age uh, and uh, i just uh, in very in short i have given you the different uh, if you observe there are kind of three distinct uh, periods within the romantic age itself like precursors to romantic age then the zenith which reaches with the poems of wordsworth and coleridge and then finally you have the uh, younger generation of nature poem uh, poets that is keats shelley uh, and uh, how there is a transition from uh, poems just being merely descriptive to uh, talking about a mystical experience with the uh you know uh, almost looking at nature as the divine being itself and kind of sustaining uh, the mankind so uh, go through i have also shared the notes as pdf so please go through them uh, the next uh, i'll shall be doing uh, wordsworth uh, wordsworth's two poems that is the solitary reaper and the world is too much with us so looking forward to the next lecture uh work hard take care and thank you for your patient listening